Hello everyone, I'm standing here on our lot with uh, two large vehicles in back of me. Obviously I have the excursion with the little box trailer, little, <laughs> little box trailer, and then we have the scenic cruiser over here. Now, what I want to see is can the scenic cruiser handle the box trailer, and if it can, which I'm pretty sure it can, how well will it handle? Now, the box trailer is empty, there's nothing in it currently. Uh, the tractor is outside of it, so this is just an empty box trailer. And I want to say that this thing probably weighs about 3,000 pounds or so. I don't know exactly. Now this Scenic Cruiser over here has a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. However, this unit is 36 feet long. Now, you take that 36 foot and add it to the, I think it's like 20 something, 24 feet, somewhere around there. From, uh, from nose to tail here. And this is gonna be a pretty long rig. This will be the longest rig I've ever driven. I realize it's probably not quite as long as a semi or a tractor trailer, maybe, I'm not sure. I'm gonna get the exact measurements of the trailer and then hook it up to this thing and see what it's like. But this will be the biggest vehicle I've ever driven. And I wanna see how does it handle it? Does it even like, the thing already feels kind of underpowered when you go to start off from a stop because the Cummins in there is only rated at about 260 horsepower, I think. I've heard you can do some mods to turn the power up a little bit, but anyway, how's it gonna do with that trailer? So let's see how this goes. I don't have the hitch with the sway bar link on it like I usually do because that wasn't gonna fit on the Scenic Cruiser. So I brought this adjustable hitch here so I can sever it, uh, set it wherever I need to because I don't know for sure where I'm going to have to position that so that it's level in proportion with the RV. So I've got this adjustable hitch. I'm probably going to need to grab another board or two and set it under there, but I've got some blocks in the trailer that we can use for that. We're going to unhook it from the truck, fire the scenic cruiser up, and then we're going to hook it up here and see how it does. Now while we're hooking this up, or unhooking it rather, let's go get the scenic cruiser warmed up. Let's see how she starts. It's not very cold out here. I wanted to get out here and do a cold start, see how it does, but I never made it out here when it was like 10 degrees like you guys saw with this thing. But I have faith that it will it would do just fine. So I think right now it's like in the 40s or something like that, but it's been sitting for a long time. You guys can see that I faced it uphill, so we don't have that stalling problem, or we shouldn't at least. So let's get this thing fired up, let's see how it runs after sitting for a while in the cold. I think it's gonna do just fine, but let's see. That works, very good. So that tells us our batteries are probably still okay. And there's no heater, glow plugs. You don't need any of that on a big Cummins. So let's see how it does. All right, here we go. We have contact. It's so reliable, this thing. <laughs> oh man, the thing started up perfectly. I mean, you guys saw that, it hardly even cranked. It just fired right up. So, we'll let that warm up for a little bit. Let's go get the trailer unhooked from the truck the rest of the way. Let's see, can I put my foot on it and it not stall? Hey! She's smoking a little bit, a little bit of smoke, but still super clean. Should probably put some wheel chocks down there, but I think I'm gonna be okay. Here we go. All right, we're clear. Good. Let's pull the truck forward. Switch over the hitch to the scenic cruiser, see how it does. Love that little power step. Yeah. All right, 
And look at here. This is how you know this was a top of the line model. You got a black and white backup camera with an actual, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> with an actual glass screen behind that. At least it feels glass, but anyway. It has an auto and a manual mode, so when you put it in reverse, uh, automatically comes on or you can turn on manual so it's on all the time. Come on forward, do that with your backup cameras. I think GM and Ram are doing it. You guys can do it too. All right, we built up air pressure, so we're good to take the brakes off. There's no park here. You only have reverse, neutral, and drive. Right now we're in neutral. So if I take my foot off the brake, we're gonna start rolling backwards, as you can see there. And that engages firm. That good six-speed Allison. Love having that backup camera there so you can keep an eye on things. Makes the excursion look like a toy. Once again, no park, so if you want to stop, you go into neutral and then you set the air brakes. Just like that. Now this hitch is only rated for, oh, for 5,000 pounds. So, like I said earlier in the video, I don't know what that trailer weighs empty, but I'm going to guess around 3,000. So both the hitch and the hitch receiver here are rated for 5,000. Now, a little bit skeptical of that. You can see it's kind of bottomed out here some, but I think we're going to be okay. A little bit rough, a little bit rusty in there. So great. This is another thing we're going to have to fix. We're going to have to put the, the correct trailer wire adapter on here, which I have. I'll show you guys how to do that. Let's just slide this in here. go well, <laughs> now I definitely need to make sure that I don't bottom out here because that's sitting really low <laughs> all right here we go we're ready to hook up all lined up here let's see how that looks level wise I'd say that looks pretty good when we level out here after I pull forward that should level the trailer out <laughs> Can't get over how small that trailer looks compared to that RV. Now this is gonna be fun. So now of course that we have a trailer, we have to have trailer lights. Now this thing originally had a four-way connector on there, which no trailer in existence anymore these days uses. <laughs> I don't know about that, maybe there's a few, but anyway, I cut that off and I got a little seven-way here. I rewired this up with a seven-way. I'm trying to remember off the diagram that I use. White is ground. Brown is the tail lights. I believe the green is the, oh crap. Your green and yellow, one of the two are the right turn and the other is the left turn. So anyway, your turn signals are the yellow and green. Running lights are the brown and then white is the ground. Before I mount this permanently with the zip ties, let's go turn the lights on or the hazards. And let's make sure that this works. So here's our hazards right there. And as you can see, they're flashing. Let's go back and take a look. Okay. They're real dim, but they are lighting up. We'll keep looking into it. Let's try our running lights. Let's go see if those are on. Okay, so we do have running lights. They're just, everything looks really dim. Maybe it's the light, I don't know. I'm gonna fire it up here. Let's check our turn signals. There's a right turn signal. There's the right turn signal. And as you can see, it's working. So I think maybe we just, well, as you can see, it's increasing and decreasing in speed. I think we just got something funky going on with the electrical. But as long as we got brake and turn signal, we're good. And the left turn signal, as you can see, is working. So we have turn signals and obviously brakes because the brakes are tied into the turn signals. We just have really dim running lights, so as long as we're in the daytime, we'll be okay for now. Well, I think I should just go start working at an RV shop now. Look at that. I broke one of my zip ties, but hey, you only need one. There it is right there. Now that is pretty. That would look perfect on a million dollar motorhome. I give it the seal of approval. All right, folks, we are ready. 
So I had to get some fuel. And these are the big truck nozzles here. I had to stop at a truck stop because no way you're going to get that thing at a regular, a regular gas pump or diesel pump in this case. I should clarify. Well, sometimes I wonder if you got a gas powered RV that's towing a trailer like this and it's really long. Where do you pull in? I mean, do you have a truck stop with gas? I'm kind of curious. So I got to say, I'm impressed with how well it did. I guess it's just because the thing is so big, you don't even notice something like a trailer back there because you really don't even know it's back there until you look in your mirrors or you look at the camera. But it pulled well. I think I might adjust the hitch a little bit so that it sits down a little lower in the front because it's up a little high there. I got one more notch to go down. But it towed great. Like I said, you don't even know it's back there. Both ride and power-wise, it's just the same. And of course, having the camera here is really nice too. Gives you an idea of how the trailer's doing. I really like that. And huh, I just got out to check my lights again just to see if they're working. And lo and behold, what do you know? Look at that. They're working now. So it must have just been a loose connection or a ground or something, but uh, all lights are working now except that little marker light because this just burnt out. But yes, all lights are a go. So we're good. Now I've been told this thing either has a 100 or a 150 gallon uh, fuel tank. And I'm starting to think it's 150 gallon, but I could be wrong. The reason I'm thinking that though is <laughs> 100 bucks only took me from a quarter to just barely above half there and that was about 37 gallons i think it was so <laughs> i have a feeling we have a pretty massive fuel tank in here so if you figure that it's like 37 and i don't know maybe it is only 100 gallons but man it sure seems like it's got a massive fuel tank if that's all it moved it's really nice having the camera there to keep an eye on things that's a nice feature even if it's just black and white video Especially when you're making a turn like this, you can kind of keep an eye on how sharp you're turning back there. With something this big, the back end kicks out like that. You can jackknife a trailer like this pretty easily. So you got to take your turns pretty wide. And there you go. It's starting to get a little dark out. I'll, I'll try to get a few more video clips. And we are wide open throttle on the entrance ramp. That engine develops its torque so low. Looks like we've got a clear shot onto the highway here, which is good. Oh, look at that. What a nice person in that car. Flash the brights for me. Lovely. Let's give him a flashback. There we go. So it definitely feels slow getting up to 60. Man, once you're there, it loves to maintain it. And you can see the trailer's riding great. No swaying. It's riding perfectly fine back there. And I think the reason because of that is the RV's breaking up all the wind. So there's no swaying, there's no moving around. It's pulling perfect. I'm very impressed. You don't even know it's back there until you look at your camera or your rear view mirrors. This is great. Now this is where it's going to get a little tricky. Again, I hope you guys can see this okay with the low light, but uh, just about back home here, and we're going to be going through the neighborhood with this big thing. So let's see how this goes. We get a little trapped. It's not exactly the easiest thing to turn around, but hey, let's see if we can make it. I think we can. I don't think camera's got great low light vision. I'm surprised. Doing really well. Fortunately, there's hardly any cars on the street. <laughs> this may be a lot easier than I thought it would have been. Actually, yeah, this is going to be perfectly easy. This is going to be no problem whatsoever. <laughs> Piece of cake. Yeah, no problem. Just in time for Christmas. So I measured both the units connected here, the trailer and the RV here. And from the front of the RV all the way to the back of the trailer, 
we have 62 feet total. And our professional trailer adapter here, trailer iron plug, held up this great. So I'm going to leave that there. Oh, it's perfect.